Hey everyone, it's Angel Martinez with the Orlando Predators, the Spanish play-by-play -play announcer, uh, in collaboration, of course, with the Orlando Predators, the Arena Football League 96.1 FM vid from Orlando, and Sports Radio 12.9. And I also have the pleasure to speak with Leo Ether, who's taken time away from his busy schedule to talk with us here today, as he is one of three performing artists over at the Kia Center this Sunday coming up at 1 o'clock. So if you guys want to see Leo and the other artists, all you have to do is purchase your tickets at OrlandoPredatorsFootball.com and therefore you can watch all of the action on the field and you hear the performers at the half and then after the game. So it's going to be a big party, Cinco de Mayo, for a lot of people who love to celebrate. And I say, Leo, to everybody, Cinco de Mayo is like St. Patrick's Day. Everybody for one day, right, wants to have the Hispanic Heritage Day for one day. And then they drink, they party, and everything else. And then, you know, May 6th comes around and no one cares. But <laughs> it's just, it's fun time. But Leo, thank you for taking the time for coming on the show with me today. No, thank you so much for the invitation, Angel. It's really cool to be here and uh, really excited about Sunday. It's a beautiful day to share with family and friends and with the Predators. So we're really excited to be there. Now, for those who don't know, he is a singer and also a poet, which I find really interesting when it comes to music because the connection there, and it, there's got to be, for and maybe not every musical artist, is it easier when you write your own music or you perform, is it easier because of the poetry kind of flows with the music? Um, I guess the, the way I see it or in my process is... Um, Everything is a feeling, and, and I am lucky enough to be able to translate it into different ways. So, like, one of them is writing the lyrics, and, and you know, uh, after that, like, the music and the performance is another way to sort of interpret that feeling. So that's kind of how I feel about it, is just two different outlets for, for that feeling or that idea that you want to transmit to the audience, you know. So that's kind of how I see it, and, and at this point, um, after doing it every day for so long, it's just, it's just kind of like all merged together, you know? Right. Uh, so, so yeah, but that's kind of my process is, is just, sometimes the poetry is, a, is the catalyst and sometimes the music and then the performance is just like the ultimate um, medium or way to transmit that feeling. Now, I'm gonna, I'm, we're gonna go at one point in the segment. And, and so for those who listen in for the first time, I always have the running joke, Leo, is that when I switch over to Spanish, I always tell people, press the number two on your phone so you can hear the <laughs> translation. Uh, so you guys will be able to hit number two later on on your phone. But when starting in, in your musical career, because now we're going to kind of go back a little bit and then we'll go back to your childhood as well. But starting in your, in your musical career, where was that point in your life that you thought, other than just loving music, that you actually wanted to perform as well? Uh, well, I um, graduated high school in, in Colombia, that's where I'm from, from Bogota, uh, like at around 14, almost 15 years old. And, um, and my, my parents kind of uh, brought me here to the U.S. And uh, those first years here in the U.S. were kind of a little challenging for me uh, for many reasons. And, and I think I always kind of had music in the background. My grandpa was a musician and he had a trio back in Colombia. And my dad is like a, uh, you know, of, uh, he loves music. He always had records and cases and cases of records. But I never really, he never really kind of um, dawned on me that this was sort of my calling until I was here. And music just literally saved my life and he gave me a reason to stay focused and, and, and stay in a positive path and and that's kind of when I just yeah it just kind of happened so naturally after that but yeah it's when I started what I call the the path of the immigrant here in the U.S. that's kind of that was a catalyst for me. Gina that's for a lot of people and, it, and it's and it's good that you say that because the reason why we're having this conversation today backstage with and, and today we're with Leo Ether but you talked about just now how people have had moments in their life and not every day is, you know, it, we wake up and we have the choice of having a good day or a bad day. Sometimes people make choices for us because we can just be somewhere. It could be at a coffee bar. It could be just driving. And things happen, right? Life happens. There's detours. As you said, how music kind of saved your life. If you can share that a little bit with everyone, because people in, in today's world, we know that everybody goes through different emotions. The, I think the tough part is for someone to come out and ask someone 
Hey, do you have a moment? And sometimes just hearing those words, you don't know what goes on with somebody. It, it just could be they're having that moment and they think, is, is today really my last day? Or how bad is it that I really think my life is, but may not be as bad as, you know, as another situation. So how was it the music in a connection with you in your life? I, I think, uh, like you said, I, um, I, I tend, I grew up uh, sort of in a, in a, you know, difficult, violent environment in Colombia and stuff like that. So a lot of times, I guess, you have all these unresolved feelings, you know, and then on top of that, come over here to the U.S. And, and there were certain hardships, um, uh, you know, regarding being an immigrant and maybe people not, not looking at you in a positive way because you're an immigrant and things like that and, and you just have all these feelings you know I, I kind of tend to be a little bit over perceptive you know and and that can be really overwhelming and I can see where many of us were just overwhelmed with so many things and especially negative things sometimes really weighed on us um, but that's exactly why for me the hack was writing and singing because that allowed me to channel many emotions in a positive way um, and that really made a difference in my life, um, you know, and obviously like like everyone I just kind of started doing it out of sort of a primal necessity to just, you know, channel my emotions uh, But then it just became um, Yeah, my, my my healing, you know, and the healing of many people around me and uh, my own family and everything so it just became sort of that uh, pursuit for for light, you know, that's kind of why I call my project Leo Ether because it's, Ether is about light and, and just channeling that light. So I feel that that's kind of why um, I'm so grateful for music because regardless of my professional endeavors as a musician, which nowadays I'm full-time musician and doing events and everything, it's also just healing, you know, it's healing for not only for me, but for whoever uh, sharing uh, a performance with me so and I see it in all of my fellow my colleagues uh, all of my fellow musicians and people in the industry it's just there's so much healing that comes with music and I feel like that's a gift that we can all share you know so. no you're right because the, I think the funniest thing is that no matter something happens in life like Mike for example Michael Jackson is is kind of like the, the perfect scenario everyone was busy with life Michael Jackson passes away and everybody goes to the Apollo. The people at least that live in New York. You know, everybody went there because they wanted to celebrate his life. And I think with music, we've seen it. it I mean, there's been so many different events in our lifetime that no matter what it is, it's always been music is like that, that human drug. And, and in a good way, meaning that, you know, you, you take it because it's that energy that you feel. You have... On the way home, you could have had the worst conversation that you wanted to go in another direction to be positive but you're, you're frustrated and you think and that one song could be in the background of the radio and you turn it up and everything changes your mood changes and everything else so because of artists like you and others the great thing is like you guys find a way without doing it you know, on purpose like for example you come up with a lyric that connects with somebody yet your intention wasn't to make that lyric specifically for one person it's for everybody. And I think something with musicians, you know, artists, performing artists, theater artists, it's you guys have this connection with everybody. From the minute you guys start singing and talking to that microphone, it's that connection everybody feels like. I love Leo's music because of this. And then the person tells you the reason why they love it and why they love you, you know, personally as, as a person. But I think that's one thing that all of us tend to miss is that no matter how crazy our life can be no matter how bad sometimes we think like man it's just life sucks and it doesn't suck it's just that we're caught up in a moment but you switch on that record or whatever it is an old cassette for those of us who are a little bit older you know a cd whatever it is and then like life changes for like an hour you could be at, at leo's theater music and hear just your album and hear different songs I'm like you know i'm 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 good i'm feeling better so have people reached out to you from your music or even when you're performing live and said, Leo, thank you for the music you perform or how you sing or even your poetry where it's at least made me feel a little bit better? Um, yeah, I mean, I have a very, I'm you know, fortunate enough to say yes. Uh, people of many different cultures, sometimes even people reach out from like 
countries like Germany, I wouldn't, you know, I mostly, I, I, I'm recently rewriting in English, but a, a lot of times, I, most of the time I sing in Spanish, and uh, if then people in Germany or Japan reach out to me through social media and they, they say, man, like, I really felt that this and that. I also recently did a very uh, wonderful experience. Uh, there's a singer-songwriter from Argentina who put together this, this concert where people would listen to us through uh, Bluetooth headphones mm -hmm. instead of like in a you know in a musical chamber. It was just like we we went into the box and people could hear us and see us perform, but they would listen to us on, on Bluetooth headphones, and that was very impactful for the audience who saw us that day because it was literally like a week ago because they could just focus 100% on the lyrics and and feel the performance so close and. And I was able to do these micro points between the songs, and 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 I honestly, people came up to me like with tears in their eyes because they felt, they really felt that connection, and and they told me like the the line that sticks the most, it's like, wow, I, I never, the sincerity that you have, you just, you know, moved me so much, and, and like, like you said, it was just, it was it's just wonderful to see that that the incredible magnitude of music is just so powerful for all of us, you know, so healing, so, so yeah. And that's the best part though, because you guys, like I said, we may not know, we're fortunate if we're able to talk to artists and, and people that we, we, we want to connect with, but because of the busy lifestyles, and especially as you become more and more popular, then it's less and less that we have the opportunity to, to speak with people. So you guys, with again, as I said before, we thank you because the lyrics, how you make us feel, how you make us move, it's different for everybody. And people, I think the one thing that people don't understand either is that when you, anytime we go out and we hear music, and from different cultures, from different parts of the world, you don't know... It's not like a certain dance that you have to do. Like, you don't have to impress anybody with a certain dance. Just move your body. Move with the rhythm. Like you said, when they put on the Bluetooth headphones, that's the best thing because not everybody can dance, right? Not everybody has rhythm, but there's a certain note that people like and they hear in their head and they're able to dance with that particular note. So <clears throat> you guys, especially like you said, now you're making a transition where you're, you're changing the lyrics into English, but in, in Spanish, and we'll get to that here in a second as well. When people hear it in Spanish, and let's just say you are locally at a, at a maybe let's just say a cigar bar in Orlando, and people hear your music, do they still kind of look up at the speaker or they look up at the surrounding and they thought, this is a pretty good beat, and then you watch them move with the beat of your music? Yeah, I mean, it's been uh, a kind of um, a wide range of uh, circumstances from, um, I remember like one of the, you know, when I first arrived to Orlando, um, I, I remember that <laughs> I got booed off of an open mic for singing in Spanish because people were like, what are you doing, you know? And to be all the way now where people don't care which which uh, language I'm singing in as long as the performance is good and, and there's quality and they can feel it, like you said. And then I also kind of taken it upon myself to, um, like I said, I've, I've kind of used poetry as a, as a vehicle for connection beyond the language. So sometimes when I'm singing in Spanish, uh, very often I, I do these micro poems to give context to the next that's coming up, the song that's coming up next. And man, it's just, I've, I've been really grateful that that has been really effective and it has deepened the connection, um, you know, beyond just like, yeah, I'm vibing to this, like, like I was saying earlier, like that really like hitting with the words and the music uh, has been really, I'm just really grateful that I was able to kind of hack that so that people can feel more connected to what we're doing and, and just fully enjoy it. Like you said, just hang on to a note or, or the idea that I that I explained and, and then we just go. So, so yeah, I've been, I've had some of those. I've, I've been definitely really lucky the last, especially after post pandemic, um, it's been a really good connection of, of many different factors for me, so I'm really grateful for that. Gene, it's good too because it, a lot of people during the pandemic, a lot of folks stopped doing what they love. I, I don't know why, because it, and it was just, it was a depressing time and a lot of people were scared. And I think that was the toughest part because even till today, 
people are still scared either to be who they are, to say what they want to say, because you can express yourself in so many different forms, but it, it, it depends too, because you can be somewhere and not understand the language that's being spoken, but through your body mechanics, you can say to somebody like, you know, I'm lost or, you know, what's going on here? What's happening? But if you come off too strong, right? When you walk in somewhere, uh, oh, I don't understand what's going on here. What's the deal? And then people now see you like, is this guy a threat or does he want to enjoy what we have here? The good thing is like for us, like Bunnel, is that when we go to different places, for us it's like, okay, I'm enjoying what's going on. You know, I like what's happening here. So everybody is different depending on, on the reaction of the place where they are. With that being said, if you had to be in a place that you've never been to before, something completely brand new, and I'm gonna throw you a, a little bit of, of a, not hardball question, but you're, you're in a place, first time ever, who are the three artists that you wanna bring with you to this place to enjoy it? All right, well, uh, as being sort of bilingual and having sort of like the duality of culture, for me, it's like, you know, I have like a, huge range of, of musicians that I like um, but if I had to say uh, like the first one that jumps to mind is there's this um, Mexican uh, band called Caifanes um, they uh, the writer Saul Hernandez he I love like the things that he sings about um, and how he you know sort of protects and heals with his music all of all of the mexican people like i think it's, it's just wonderful and i love their music there's also a singer songwriter called sirio rodriguez uh, who throughout the years has been very controversial i mean he's definitely way like older right now but uh in his heyday he was really controversial but he's just a great singer songwriter a great inspiration for me and then i mean from from groups in English, I mean, there are so many that I love. The list is so big. Um, uh, I mean, I love Incubus, Radiohead, uh, even some of the classics that, you know, my, my, my parents used to like, like Pink Floyd, especially Pink Floyd is so big. Mm -hmm. uh, artists I really like is like very vibey, like a lot of the music that we do is very kind of spacey and echoey, and so I really like them too. There are so many, even like King Crimson, that is super progressive yep. metal um, rock. I love them too. There's just so many. The list goes on and on. And, and then when I was lucky enough to do some training at Berkeley College of Music, I, I was able to learn so much about the blues and how much it relates to folk music in general. I love folk South American music. And, and I saw the connections and the things that between blues and when it started and, and folk music in South America. So it was just like, wow, you know, there's just so much, so much talent, you know, there's so much beauty in music. So it is. That's a great part because you have to, you really have to be open to music because I, I we were lucky because my dad always and my mom too, but we always had it where they wanted to make sure that we listened to everything not just you know because obviously being in Ipano it, it's different because you, that's the first thing they want to bring you up for because you always want to remember your culture then they tell you okay now it's time to explore different cultures and different ethnicities and you guys can hear everything that goes on so you're not just one-sided so when you're going somewhere and somebody plays something like you don't know this song I'm like no versus us we get to we get to enjoy like everything my sister and I were the same way where we'll listen to anything and everything that's out there and just enjoy I will listen to stuff from overseas don't understand what they're saying but the beat and the rhythm keeps me in tune to what's going on and i think that's the great thing so now folks as i said to you before this is when you're going to press the number two on your phone because <laughs> things are about to be switched up here so Dios, nosotros haciendo hispano la, y, y la cultura de nosotros siempre con la música ha sido bien grande para nosotros sea una boda una fiesta como este este domingo lo que va a pasar pero nosotros siempre tenemos una artista que es, es que tú oyes la música y ya tú sabes, like, ok, esta es you know, cierta persona. Para mí, Enrique Iglesias y Pitbull, por la energía que ellos tienen, cuando tú vas a un concierto, mm -hmm. es, es, ellos siempre dan el máximo. La gente que no entiende que nosotros los latinos, es, es, se va a hacer un poquito difícil, pero con la gente saben que nosotros venimos a cantar. Cuando vinimos con la fiesta, nosotros que vinimos, que la gente, que sean americanos, que sean morenos, que sean you know, de, de Japón, 
que vengan con el ritmo que como, coño, a mí no me importa lo que está pasando en la vida ahora, porque conmigo es, es una fiesta, o sea que ellos, nosotros creemos que ellos gozan la vida. Entonces con usted, con la música que tú tienes, como tú dijiste, viene de Colombia, y mucha gente también dice, porque ah, es de Colombia, chacho, ya viene con problemas, ya viene con el otro, pero la gente no, no conoce que hay muchos artistas que vinieron de Colombia, y ustedes uh -huh. siempre vienen con un ritmo más diferente como los puertorriqueños, los dominicanos. A ti, el artista de, de español, dejando a la gente americana por un, un momento, pero lo hispano, ¿cuál fue la persona de, de niño? ¿Cuál fue el primer hispano que le gustaba la música de ellos? Uh, de, ¿Mi música? La, ¿La música mía? Sí. Eh, bueno, eh, como, como les estaba explicando, eh, pues en realidad yo no comencé mi carrera musical sino hasta cuando llegué aquí a los Estados Unidos Ajá. Eh, y, y a través de la música fue que empecé a conocer mucha gente hispana aquí en Orlando y, y en Nueva York y sitios así eh, y yo comencé solo con mi guitarra eh, pues haciendo covers de, 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 de artistas que me gustaban y, y, pero entonces siempre escribía y, y de vez en cuando cantaba mis canciones eh, y, y, y fue esa gente, fue ese, digamos, ese núcleo de esa comunidad de músicos con las que yo me conocí aquí en, en Orlando que fueron los primeros como que en apoyarme y decir me, me gustan mucho tu, tus canciones, cómo cantas eh, y, y ese fue como el primer impulsito que tuve. Eh, yo eventualmente eh, pude tener los medios para ir a Centro y Sudamérica a cantar a públicos que hablan español eh, como lengua nativa y, y fue una experiencia maravillosa y también pues sí fue sobre todo porque yo esa primera gira que hice llevaba mi libro de poesía junto con la música que estaba haciendo, entonces lo mismo, no hubo como esa conexión eh, con, como en múltiples, múltiples puntos en la poesía y en la música y, en, y, y pues eso también fue muy bonito para mí, fue mi, primer, mi primera experiencia cantándole al público hispano de por sí y ya eventualmente pues eh, aquí en Orlando y en los Estados Unidos pues poquito más y más se ha avanzado la cultura latina y, y el público es más mucho más receptivo a lo que, a lo que yo has, hago en español, ¿no? porque al principio, como te dije, mucha gente era como que no, no le interesaba si no contabas en inglés, ¿no? Sí. Y, y, pero eventualmente cambió y, y sí, eh, creo que le atribuyo, eh, el apoyo inicial fue mis colegas, los músicos que conocí aquí en Orlando, que también eran hispanos o son hispanos y, y, y ellos fueron como los que me apoyaron y me dejaban cantar en sus shows a veces y ahí fue donde comenzó todo para mí. Bueno, en, en Colombia, porque eh, hay, hay gente que viene aquí a los Estados Unidos y, y hay hispanos también, porque dicen, ah, pues este, esta persona es de Colombia, sin conociendo quién es la persona y tú, eh, tanta gente que tú has visto en tu vida, desde, bueno, de pequeño hasta ahora. Había una persona que dijeron, bueno, por justicia, a mí me gusta este muchacho, Leo, pero yo creo que como es colombiano, maybe que no me entiende, maybe que sea como la cultura de él es diferente como nosotros. Cuando tú estás conociendo a la persona por primera vez, ¿te miran como una persona o te miran como la persona que vino de Colombia? Bueno, yo eh, en realidad pues me, me muevo en, un, en una atmósfera, eh, bueno, esto va a sonar un poco extraño, pero una, una atmósfera sin límites. No, como tú decías, creo que la música es algo que es tan trascendental y yo literalmente todo lo que hago es música. Si no estoy cantando en la tarima, estoy escribiendo, estoy grabando o estoy, eh, también soy ingeniero de sonido, entonces también estoy apoyando un evento, entonces siempre estoy en esa en el mundo de, de la música y, y creo que la gente pues me ve como, como un cantautor independiente de digamos de mi nacionalidad y creo que eso y bueno y también tengo la, la fortuna de ser como tú bilingüe y poder entender ambos idiomas entonces creo que mi, eh, siempre he querido ser flexible y expanderme y, y, y eso me ha permitido conocer gente de muchos caminos Ahí hay gente que pues inmediatamente dice, ah, tú eres de Colombia por el acento o, o algo así, sí. eh, pero nunca ha sido como que he intentado no necesariamente 
quedarme en, en una caja de que soy latino, soy hispano, sino soy un cantautor y, y, y comparto mi música con el que quiera escuchar, con el que quiera compartir conmigo y con mis, con mis colegas y ya, ¿no? Eh, pero, pero sí, a veces es gracioso, ¿no? A veces te identifican por el, por el acento, en inglés, a veces en español y, y pues, ah, sí, porque yo tengo un amigo que es de Bogotá o de Medellín y, y pues se dan cuenta, pero pues a mí en realidad... Eh, sí, yo soy muy receptivo, no, no, no me molesta si, si dicen, tú, mucha gente me dice que si soy de Argentina o que si soy italiano o esto y lo otro, pero no me molesta, o sea, no, no importa, o sea, desde que haya buena energía, no, no importa. Sí, y por eso pregunté la pregunta, porque es extraño, porque la gente, y, y no es por, por diciendo que es una persona mala, por la cosa es que la gente, es como nosotros de Puerto Rico, si vive en, en la izquierda o la, si está en la montaña, Habla un poquito diferente. Si está en la playa, un poquito diferente. Entonces la gente sí. quiere saber, oye, ¿dónde está? ¿Dónde fue de esta persona? ¿Dónde estaban? Entonces conmigo es diferente, porque mi familia, siendo puertorriqueño, nosotros fuimos primero que prende la voz de uno, o sea, la lenguaje de uno. Entonces después habla lo que sea donde ustedes están. O sea, nosotros como estamos aquí en Estados Unidos, es diferente. O sea, la gente me ven y no saben este el americano, el italiano, no sé lo que es, pues como yo no tengo el acento, es diferente. O sea, la gente cuando yo voy para Puerto Rico o diferentes sitios, me dicen, coño, y tú sabes español, adiós, y el nombre es Ángel Martínez. ¿Qué tú crees? ¿Cuánto americano que tú sabes que se llaman Ángel Martínez? So, <risa> por eso lo pregunto, porque la gente siempre, no, con los hispanos es un, una cosa maravillosa, porque nosotros podemos ir para cualquier sitio y la gente siempre está, oye, de, de, el acento, ¿de dónde eres? Y por eso te pregunto esa pregunta. Ahora, otra cosa también. Nosotros sabemos hace años que está Gloria Estefan con, con el esposo. Una banda que son tremendo. Que hasta la gente en americano dicen, ah, sí, yo sé quién es esa persona. Gloria Estefan, I love her. ¿Verdad? Porque ellos tienen un ritmo también diferente. Y ella, la conexión que ella tiene con los americanos, ella nunca, nunca, nunca en su vida creía que, wow, ¿cómo puede ser una señora? ¿verdad? viniendo de una isla, viniendo aquí, ahí en Miami, poniendo el Miami Sound Machine, todas las cosas que pasaron. Y ella, fue un, un, una entrevista años atrás que no pensó cómo puede ser que el ritmo de ella llegó a tantos sitios. Y no era más que aquí en Estados Unidos, en, el, en francés, en España, diferentes sitios. So, porque Gloria Estefan y lo que hacían la gente antes, Ahora que los muchachos nuevos, bueno, la juventud ahora, eso que a ellos les gusta. Y a ellos les gusta conectar con una persona joven, música buena. Y tú, como ser un poeta, los niños si te ven, o tú vas a un sitio, un concierto, la pregunta que ellos te... me que sea una pregunta porque ellos dicen, bueno, tú eres joven, ¿cómo tú empezaste? ¿Cómo puede ser que tú eres conectado con tanta gente? ¿Qué tú puedes ser la juventud hoy? Que dicen, bueno, yo quiero ser como Leo. Yo creo ser como él, como él canta, como él, el ritmo de él, como él habla. Porque hay, hay muchos que están, saben lo que quieren hacer, pero no lo hacen. Pues se aguanta un poquito para atrás. So, ¿Qué tú puedes decir a los muchachos jóvenes que quieren ser cantantes, pero no saben cómo empezar? Ah, bueno, es, esa pregunta está un poco difícil de responder. Um, porque siento que, eh, bueno, primero que para mí, lo puedo hablar de mi experiencia, porque es como la experiencia que conozco, ¿no? Eh, uh -huh. Como te dije, pues para mí la, la, la música fue un, eh, un agente como de positivismo, eh, algo que me, 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 me ayudó a curarme espiritualmente y me, y me ayudó a ser mejor, y por eso continué en ese camino. Sé que que para ser eh, un, un músico profesional tienes que tener pues eh, primero mucha, mucha alegría cuando lo haces porque eso te va a dar la fuerza de ser disciplinado, ser consistente eh, y también que no solo es suficiente ser buen cantante o buen artista, también tienes que comportarte de una manera muy eh, profesional, eh, de tratar a la gente con respeto, con, eh, con cariño porque eh, muchas de las cosas de la industria de la música eh, tienen mucho más trabajo que solo pararse a cantar también tienes que ser persona eh, 
porque eso también te va a abrir eh, oportunidades y muchas veces así tengas talento, así seas muy bueno, si no, si no tienes una buena actitud mucha gente no, no va a querer trabajar contigo. Entonces yo diría primero que de verdad eh, amen la música primero porque la quieren y, y por nada más que siempre lo hagan porque les, les da alegría. Segundo, que sean, esa alegría sea suficiente para que sean disciplinados y consistentes en sus entrenamientos o en su práctica como artistas. Y tercero, que, que entiendan que ser artista no te da una licencia para ser mala persona, sino que, que tienes que, que ser persona siempre, porque eh, es, solo tener talento no significa que puedas tratar a la gente mal, eh, y que muchas puertas se te van a cerrar si no te portas bien. Es como lo que les diría. <risa> no, buen checho, porque es, es verdad. Si uno no habla, yo creo que en este mundo lo que falta es la, la persona. Antes nosotros pudimos hablar con cualquier persona y estaba de lo más chévere. Ay, que mira, yo no te conozco quién tú eres, pero ven a mi casa, una, una taza de café, cualquier cosa. Ahora la gente es un poquito más reservado, que ellos dicen, oh, no conozco a esta persona tan bueno pero le voy a dar una chance entonces nosotros es, es diferente yo creo que si la gente se abre un poquito más como estaba antes de COVID antes que todo esto está pasando ahora entonces conectamos mejor so, y eso es más que nada opinión mío and now you guys can go back and press number one on your phone because we you know, the, the translation is back here again but I have one last question for Leo Leo thank you once again for taking the time for being with me today Thank you. Shit, this is the point where sometimes people find it a little bit awkward, maybe not. Is there something that you can share with us as the people come and watch you perform on Sunday that is something you probably haven't shared either on another show or somewhere else that that's, it could be meaningful, not meaningful, it could be something silly. Is there something you can share so people get to know who Leo is? Uh, well, um let's say I haven't really spoken uh, at my house like um, I am I am very like uh, because I you know the the rhythm of the music industry is, is pretty high like I, I love um, eating uh, I love food and so um, one of the things that we do here at home is uh, we kind of plant um, in our own garden and we've been lucky enough to get like a lot of produce And, uh, and you know, it's, it's brought me a lot of joy and, and my fiance a lot of joy of being able to like eat our own vegetables. Not nice. So, so I'm really, really grateful for that. That's kind of something that I know it has nothing to do with music, but um, makes me, it brings me a lot of joy because it's like to see nature and to see life and, and you know, seeing the harvest, even if it's smaller or big, or, it's just really, wow. It's, nature is amazing so uh, that's maybe something I could share that it's, it's, it's not usually interview talk but yeah that's something that I, I love eating so I love that we can make our own food it's, it's been a blessing so. well no that's good though because it's organic you guys know exactly what you have in the foods hey you know listen we all we all there's a lot of processed foods unfortunately today It used to not be that way when, when I was growing up now it's completely different because it, it changes people's their bodies, their frames, all kinds of different stuff. So it's good that you guys end up, you know, having your own, making your own food, your own produce. I'm the same way too. I, I love to eat as well. That's that's like kind of my, my go-to. The problem is, as you get older, the belly is unforgiving. <laughs> and so it makes it a little bit more difficult. As Once you pass 50, the belly says, that's what you want to eat? I got you. But later on, you're going to pay for it because the, the, the belly fat... <laughs> It starts to grow a little bit and you got to learn how to control it to bring it back but no I, i'm the same way with you i when i get the chance to try something new that's yeah. the best part and i think that's the one thing one great thing about our culture is the spices in a food because everybody adds it a little bit differently and yeah. that's what makes it great because you can go to you can go to two restaurants same family but different tastes yep if that yeah. makes sense You can give them the same ingredients and they're all going to cook different. <laughs> yep, they are, for sure. Well, Leo, listen, thank you very much uh, for coming on. Please let everybody know where they can find you, your music, and your poetry. Uh, well, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you, Angel, and also the, pre the Predators for, you know, uh, allowing me to be a part of Sunday. It's going to be a really wonderful event. 
Uh, if you want to listen to my music, uh, you can see all my music videos on YouTube using you know the hashtag LeoEther in social media. It's LeoEther. My website is www.leoether.com. So I'm super consistent. Uh, you can find me anywhere where you can find music, just using LeoEther as the tag. So, and I thank you so much, all of you guys, for listening and for sharing your time with with me. No, you're welcome. So don't forget we have uh, another performer that we'll be talking to as well. Sheila, she'll be uh, later on during the week. You guys will be able to watch the interview as well, the conversation. But Leo, I can't thank you enough. This was a lot of fun. I appreciate it. And uh, we can't wait to hear you on Sunday. Yeah, I can't wait to play for you guys and come out and support, support the Predators and support local artists. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. All right, everybody, enjoy it. Again, I'm Angel Martinez with the Orlando Predators. Cinco de Mayo, the celebration is this Sunday with the home opener. So thank you all for listening and watching, and we'll catch up with you.